Welcome to our top five non-luxury subcompact or small SUVs. Welcome to the Motormouth YouTube channel. If this is the first time you're here, I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we'd love if you would subscribe if you like this video. Also follow on Instagram, right? Yeah, Motormouth underscore Andrea for a sneak peek of what's happening each week on the channel. All right, we're going to do our top five and then we're going to do some vehicles that didn't yeah. make the list. Honorary mention, that's at the end. But right now, let's get into it. In number five, it's the Toyota Corolla Cross, a brand new vehicle from Toyota. So what you do is you take the best-selling nameplate ever worldwide. They've sold more Corollas than any other name. So you take that name and you put it on a crossover, yeah. the fastest growing segment of the auto industry, and I think you have a winner. Yeah, and I like the Corolla Cross. It is versatile, it's budget friendly, it's got a great starting price point for the front wheel drive model, and I think that it offers quite a bit of space. It doesn't have the biggest second row in its class, but pretty good for overall cargo capacity. Uh, what you're really buying into when you buy this Toyota Corolla Cross is you're buying into the promise that Toyota's going to deliver a quality vehicle that's going to work and run and give you no hassle and give you good resale when you go to sell it. Yeah. So it has some high and low points. It's not entirely perfect. We found the negative, first of all, this vehicle, if you're using it for driving it on the highway, you might want to give it a pass. It's yeah. noisy on the highway. It gets quite loud. We were in Quebec. Those Quebec roads are a little bit rough and it got quite loud in the city though. It's a great vehicle. It's much quieter and easy to maneuver being a smaller crossover. One thing to point yeah. out is that a hybrid is coming this year. Yeah, and that might be worth waiting for. So that might move it up the list because we actually do favor vehicles that have alternative powertrains. So just one engine, just one transmission, front wheel drive and all wheel drive. But back to that urban sort of setting, if you drive this vehicle in urban settings at not higher speeds it's quite enjoyable another high point we found the interior materials the dashboard and the way it's put together actually very appealing yeah i thought they did a really good job overall with it and it's definitely one to consider Let's get into the specs. The Corolla Cross has a two liter four cylinder engine matched with a CVT, 169 horsepower and 150 pound feet of torque. Front wheel drive and all wheel drive options are available. Here's the pricing, quite attractive. It starts in Canada at just under $25,000 for the front wheel drive model and just over $22,000 in the United States. The first all wheel drive is just over $26,000 in Canada and $23,500 in the US. Now the top trim, the one we reviewed, is the XLE all-wheel drive and it's still moderately priced. It starts at just under $34,000 in Canada and $26,500 in the US. This video is brought to you by CarCost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. Number four, it goes to the Kia Seltos. This vehicle is a favorite of mine. It's spacious, it's comfortable, and on the higher trims, it offers a larger 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen. One of the reasons why the Seltos didn't go higher up the list is it's only available with gasoline options, no electrified, but Kia does have other versions like the Soul and yeah. the Nero that are either a hybrid or an electrified version. Over at Hyundai, they have the Kona that does have that, and you might just see it on this list too. <laughs> The 1.6 liter turbo engine is a great choice, but it's only available on the top trim in Canada. It is available on two trims in the US. Now, one of the other things about this vehicle over many of its competitors, so you, you look at this class, it's called subcompact or yep. small. This is one of the bigger of the small vehicles. So if it's space you're after, this is a good choice. It's a great choice. Uh, one that is higher up on the list is actually bigger than this, but I would agree, Zach. The Seltos is good for a family if you're looking for something that is a little bit more fuel efficient because it is a smaller vehicle. So let's get into the specs. There are two engine options, as we mentioned. The base engine is a two liter four cylinder with a CVT, 146 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque. The second option is a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder with a seven speed dual clutch transmission. It has 175 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. 
Here's the pricing. Canada gets a budget-friendly front-wheel drive model at $23,500. In the United States, the front-wheel drive model is the S-Trim, one trim up from the base model in Canada, and it starts at just under $23,000. The first all-wheel drive in Canada is $25,500 and $22,500 in the U.S. The top turbocharged model, the SX, is just over $33,000 in Canada and just over $28,000 in the United States. Well, we're halfway through. What do you think our number one choice is going to be? And also stick around after number one for some honorable mentions. What's at number three? Number three goes to the Hyundai Kona. And this vehicle has four powertrains to choose from. It would have been higher on our list, except it is quite small and it won't work for everyone, especially a growing family. This is one of the best sellers in this category and having four different power plants to choose from uh, gets you all the way from using no gas with a full electric all the way up to a high performance model. And to Andrea's point, this is based on the same platform as the Seltos, the number four model. However, it is smaller and it feels more like in the higher performance versions like kind of like a hot hatch yeah it is super fun to drive i love the dual clutch transmission we had a good time with it i think it's just space that is the problem with the kona but if you can get by with it it's an amazing choice and they also updated it this year, giving us more soft touch materials. And the smaller screen gets wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but you've got an available 10 and a quarter inch touch screen. It is wired, as we know, with Hyundai and Kia products. That larger screen doesn't come with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. All right, let's get into the specs. The Kona base engine is a two liter four cylinder with a CVT. Out is the six speed automatic transmission, which was in the previous model. It has 147 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque. Front wheel drive and all wheel drive options are available. The second engine is a turbocharged 1.6 liter four cylinder, the same engine that's found in the Seltos. It too is married to a seven speed dual clutch. However, it gets more power than the Seltos at 195 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. That comes with standard all wheel drive in Canada, front wheel drive and all wheel drive are available with this engine in the US. The high performance Kona N has a two liter turbocharged engine, 276 horsepower and 289 pound-feet of torque. Next is the full plug-in EV Kona with 201 horsepower and an impressive 415 kilometers or 258 miles of range. And it's sold with front-wheel drive only. The base model Kona front-wheel drive starts at just over $22,000 Canadian and just over $21,000 in the U.S. The base all-wheel drive model is just over $24,000 Canadian and just under $23,000 U.S. All of the trims and all of the pricing are on the screen for you to look at. What's number one? Hmm. Well, let's do number two first. One of my favorites, the Mazda CX-30 with three powertrains. I'll translate for Americans. In Canada, it's Mazda. <laughs> In the United States, it's Mazda. All right? Mazda, Mazda. All right, so let's get into it. So this vehicle is quite unique in this space because when you look at the higher trims, it's more of a premium offering, Yeah, but it's got some drawbacks. It doesn't have the offering of a touchscreen. It is controlled at the center console and it's a display with Mazda Connect. Doesn't have a panoramic sunroof offering, just a moonroof. So it depends if this is something that you like or not. So I can live with all of that stuff. What I can't live with and you can't change is the space. Yeah. I find this vehicle in the real subcompact category. So it is based on the Mazda, Mazda 3 uh, hatchback actually, mm -hmm. and the back seat is small. Yeah, um, It's really cramped, the windows are small at the back, and the cargo area isn't that much bigger. So uh, why did we put this so high on the list? Well, because all of the other stuff it does, it does really well. Well, the interior is beautiful. Mazda's fit and finish is stunning. They really do compete well with more premium and luxury brands 
brands for sure. And then of course that turbo engine offering, which is so lively, engaging, entertaining. It's hard not to like it. And you'll notice a trend through a lot of these vehicles. They come with a continuously variable transmission. Yeah and love them or hate them most a lot of people don't like them but people who do own them like the fuel economy they offer uh, for those that don't like a continuously variable transmission good old six speed in this mazda mazda and that delivers a more traditional drive mm -hmm. and i think it's priced really well whether you get the base engine or the 2.5 liter or the turbocharged i think that it is very reasonable for people to choose between the three. All right, we'll do the price and the other specs. The CX-30 base engine is a two liter four cylinder with a six speed automatic transmission, 155 horsepower and 150 pound feet of torque. The second option is a 2.5 liter four cylinder with 187 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. And finally, the 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder with 256 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque on premium fuel. If you use regular fuel, you'll get a little less power, 227 and 310 pound feet of torque. It's standard all wheel drive. Canada gets a budget friendly two liter version at just over $26,000. In Canada is also available the 2.5, and that's the base engine in the U.S. It starts at 29,000 in Canada and just over 22,000 in the U.S. Now the top turbo GT trim, the one we're driving, is $38,000 in Canada and just $34,500 in the United States. Before we announce the winner, how exciting, we do have some honorable mentions after, so stick around for those. The Crosstrek from Subaru is our number one choice. It's comfortable, it's spacious, it's got great second row legroom, and it's quiet. Consumer Reports actually named it one of the quietest vehicles in this category. And you know what? The thing about Subaru that they do better than pretty much everybody is they offer functionality. Yeah. The functionality of their vehicles is second to none. The doors are big. The rear cargo area is a very useful shape. You can get in and out of it. It comes yeah. with simple but well put together interiors. And the ground clearance is great. So if you're dealing with some harsher winters and you want to have a higher ground clearance, it gets 220 millimeters or 8.7 inches. All right, now a year or so ago, this would probably not have made our list because the two liter base engine, <laughs> yes. was not really up to the job. It, no. got, it got good fuel economy. Yeah. And, and if you're looking for fuel economy in this marketplace, that might be the one you want. Sure. However, if you want it to actually drive the way I think it should, the two and a half liter engine has been introduced yeah. and that changes everything. It makes it um, a much more appealing vehicle to a wider group of people. Yeah, it's great. It's actually a fun drive and it comes with standard all-wheel drive and there's also a manual transmission offering uh, with three in Canada and two in the U.S. on those trims so that's kind of nice. A lot of people lament the fact there's no manual transmissions they offer it in Subaru. So that's really quite cool. And the, it's priced well. Yeah, it's priced really well. Yeah. The other thing is if you get the manual transmission, you don't get the uh, EyeSight Advanced Safety yeah. System as standard equipment because they have to be able to automatically brake. If you get automatic equipped cars, of course, that comes with standard equipment. Yeah. So it's, it's a good size. It's actually one of the biggest in this class. It's comfortable. It's yeah. smooth and quiet. Now it has more power comes nicely equipped and you get the standard safety features we'll take two and also will we? <laughs> no, uh, also in the u.s there is a plug-in hybrid option which we don't have in canada so let's go through the stats the pricing and then we'll come back and do our honorable mentions the base engine is a two liter four cylinder and a cvt or a manual transmission 152 horsepower and 145 pound feet of torque the second engine, the one we recommend, is the two and a half liter four cylinder engine with 182 horsepower and 176 pound feet of torque. This is only available on the outdoor or top limited trims in Canada. In the US, it's on sport and limited and comes standard with all wheel drive, no manual transmission available. The base two liter four cylinder engine with the manual transmission starts at just under $24,000 in Canada. 
In the U.S., it's just over $22,500. The base CVT in Canada starts at just under $26,000, and in the U.S., just under $24,000. The top trim with the larger engine starts at just under $34,500 in Canada, and just under $28,500 in the U.S. The hybrid option in the U.S. is just under $36,000. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what about the Honda HRV? Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't put the HRV on the list because there's a new model that's already being teased by Honda. So we think it's probably better to wait if you're in the market for that one till the new one comes out. For sure. So we picked a few great ones. One being the Volkswagen Taos. We really enjoyed that. It had a lively dual clutch transmission, but it's not one that everyone likes. Some people find that transmission to be a little bit jerky. I find it to be quite fun and sporty. So Volkswagen got rid of the sport wagon and the Golf. Those were quite popular, but they've kind of tried to marry what the old Golf had with a crossover. So the interior is almost the same as yeah. the old Golf, and then they made it into a crossover form. But it actually has, of this group, the most car-like ride, I guess with the Kona as well. But it's a, it's a lot of fun with that turbocharged engine. The other thing, it didn't make the list because the top trim is spendy. Yeah, it's up around $36,000 Canadian, but it's still a great vehicle if you're wanting to spend a few extra bucks. Next is the Trailblazer by <laughs> Chevrolet. I think that it looks really good. The exterior styling is excellent. It offers some great tech with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it was quite comfortable. And in Canada, because they have wireless Android, wireless Apple, they also have wireless charging in Canada's standard equipment. Yeah. Now, it comes with small three cylinder turbocharged engines that are really quite lively and fun to drive. Well, we actually had the more powerful version. Yeah. It can get a little bit noisy. Yeah. Uh, but also on size, Andrea, that it's almost the same size dimensionally as the Seltos. Mm. So kind of bigger. And another one to mention is the Nissan Qashqai, another good one, or in the U.S., the Nissan Rogue Sport. Yeah. Qashqai is the real name that yeah. was developed for the European market. It is one of the best-selling small crossover vehicles in the European market. It's done really well. What we like about this vehicle is, once again, it's one of the bigger in yeah. this class, and it has a very nice interior. Um, for the price, you feel like you're getting a kind of a yeah. premium experience. I really, every time I drive one, I enjoy it. Yeah, and you sit up a little bit higher, kind of up and over the dash. I think it's a great family choice. Now, we didn't put it in the top five because there are question marks around mm -hmm. the reliability of the continuously variable transmission Nissan uses in these older developed vehicles. Yeah. So that's why it didn't make the list. And that's it. That is our top five non-luxury subcompact or small crossover vehicles. Well, type below. There's going to be a lot of comments. People, well, this one should have been number one. This one should have made the yep. list. Why isn't that one on the list? Hey, this is, this is our list. Yeah, so, and, and put your list below. <laughs> yeah. We'd love to hear from you. Well, if you like this, we're going to do this more regularly with different categories. So if you want to follow along on Instagram and find out when they're going to drop, you yeah. can do that with Andrea. It's motormouth underscore Andrea. And what else do they have to do? Well, you got to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. We put out a lot of content each week on the Motormouth YouTube channel, and we'd love you to follow along. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.